All right, guys. Um, this is a hot topic. Honkers inside the spread. Honkers and socks. Uh, it's late season, like we've already talked about. We had several other options that could have made this honkers inside the spread late season much less challenging, but that's not what we wanted to showcase out of this. We had a cornfield with good ground clutter that was holding probably 5,000 candidates that we could have accomplished this very, very easily, but that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to get in a predominant traffic field with no ground clutter to show that it could be done. This is a small number style of hunt. Two, three, four guys, a very neat spread, keeping it very clean. This style of hunt, it can be messed up very easily if you're not careful. You know, we shot about half of them right there, feet down the way we wanted them. And uh, we shot the other half just right over the top of our heads. Uh, nice, clean shots. Um, it was an absolute blast. And uh, it just presented a good option to get in a field that uh, we wouldn't have hunted otherwise. So I'm gonna let Nick uh, just touch on a few things that uh, you know he takes away from this, or things that are important. Yeah, it's like this. This field has had geese in it every day we've been here. You look at it and you're like, "There's no way you can hunt it. There's no hide." And honestly, if you had other options, it'd probably make more sense to hunt a different field with a better edge you could hide in or more cover for layout blinds or something like that but the way i see it is kind of like you know if you you know you may only have permission or access to a couple of fields and you know if there's birds in the middle of a basketball court type field and you just instead of saying well i guess i can't hunt them it's an option to go hunt and kill birds it's not you know it may not be your first choice and when you get on Instagram and you see you know every hunt is feet down in the decoys I mean we the birds we shot were decoying we weren't we weren't sky busting or anything like that it was just you know we didn't finish every single bird but it was a great opportunity to go shoot 10 birds decoying them calling them we weren't pass shooting and uh, so it's just if you think you can't hunt because of a hide just think outside the box and it's definitely still an option yeah I mean there's a reason that you guys won't see us uh, doing this a lot for honkers because simply it's, it's not the it's most, not efficient, the most way. efficient way. I mean, we've hunted them for what we've uh, been chasing them for I don't know five days now with you know larger group of guys, six eight guys finding good edges, literally scouting fields. Not even so much scouting so much birds, but scouting fields with good traffic, good edges, good hides, and we've wore them out. Uh, but it is nice to present another option because that's just it's. You're not, those fields aren't always available. You're not always able to get on those fields or have access, like Nick said. Um, we made a plan to sit in the front third of this spread um, for a couple of reasons. One, when they started coming in, um, you know, from the roost, we knew we could we could get them on the front edge, and if they were setting up to land behind us, it would present a nice shot overhead. And if they set up to land in these decoys in front of us, we'd shoot them in the decoys. But we didn't want to put ourselves in our hide in the very back of the spread because we knew uh, there was a good chance that those birds would get to the perimeter and they would just be out of range. So it worked absolutely awesome. Um, if you guys want to take a look at the spread real fast, we can just kind of run through what we did. So we showed up, I started working on the hide, Nick started working on the spread. Uh, we went into this with a goal to not try to direct them to one spot because it was not going to work. We were not going to funnel them in, draw the X on the ground, and this is where they're going to land. This is going to be one of those, hey, Nick, you shoot this one on this side. Asher, you shoot this one on this side. A lot of singles, a lot of pairs. We didn't expect to decoy a group of 30 or 40 or 50 because chances are it just wasn't going to happen. Land on uh, $30 Walmart stadium chairs and We've actually got ghillie blankets that we flipped over. The mesh is brown, it's closer to the color of this field, so we opted for the mesh side brown rather than actually the ghillie side. Um, you can see uh, we've got our two shooters here. We had Cade here. Uh, well, actually Cade, we set this chair up for Cade and he spent the majority of the hunt in the ditch uh, <laughs> filming from over there because, you know, that's we wanted to get some shots from over there and then we brought him in but you'll see we we kept it tidy you know i've got a blind bag that was under my ghillie when i pulled it up 
you know, Nick shell boxes. We don't have any gun cases. We don't have a bunch of extra stuff out here. You know, my gun is kind of shiny. Tactical. So, up, you know, I'm putting the blanket over my gun, but you know, tapered spread, not too many socks for these honkers. And, you know, Nick made a nice presentation for them, the way they've been sitting in here, nice and loose. You got anything else to add? Yeah, I mean, it's they they didn't just eat it up all day. I mean, we, we, we lost a lot of birds. There's a lot of birds that came and kind of slid off of us, but, you know, we shot our 10 birds decoying and took our time and were patient and we did the best we could and it worked. So just just think of it as another option to have in the in the toolbox because as a hunter it's not always you know there's not a there's not a right or wrong way there's always variables and just having different options let's go get some breakfast how's the show from the ditch over there not bad <laughs> all right